Hi guys, it's Angus here, and today I've got my friend Matt with us today. So Matt, how you been? What's been happening? It's been pretty busy at TAFE at the Regional Institute of Performing Arts. Basically, what we're doing this term is creating our own scripts, directing our own plays, so yeah, it's a pretty ongoing process. It's a bit stressful, but hopefully we'll get it done in time. That is fantastic. So today I've got Mac here and we're going to be answering six questions. Three from both of us. So my first question that I've got is, have you ever met someone famous? Yes, I actually have met a couple of famous Australian people in the past. My first person that I can think of to the top of my head was this girl who was called Amazon from Australian TV show The Biggest Loser, which is a uh, weight loss sort of show where they pretty much weigh in each week and if you don't have the least amount of weigh-ins you get, that team goes to the elimination and they get kicked out. She basically came in a couple of years ago in my school, I think this was in year eight at the time, and she came in and she pretty much talked about like basically bullying and other like sort of stuff in the, her talk the time that she was here. And after the show, I remember correctly, we get to get a signature or a sign thing of her. I can't remember exactly where I have that signature at the moment, but it's somewhere in my room. And I met this other guy named Ian Dicko, the nickname Dicko. Basically, he came in, uh, basically I went to one of the restaurants and he was there hosting this Australian show called My Restaurant Rules. And saw him there and he was recording and doing the, uh, starting the episode up. And I remember seeing him and it was so awesome to see him. He's a really nice guy actually up in person. He's an awesome funny guy. That's the only two famous people that I know off the top of my head. There have been others, but that's the main one. So I believe this is your first question, Matt. Yep. What would be your dream car? It would have to be a Bugatti Veyron. I've seen it before in Top Gear. To those of you who don't know, Top Gear is basically a show where three presenters, they explore different cars, they test them out, and then they try like different challenges, different tasks, and different functions as well. But anyway, I've seen it before a couple of times. It's a pretty awesome car. It's like the fastest road car ever, but it's also the most expensive. It goes 1,000 miles an hour and has wow. hyper speed powers. So. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, uh, Bugatti Veyron would be my car of choice. That's such an awesome car to have. I don't imagine one of your bestest cars. If you were Prime Minister, what laws would you make? Well, firstly of all, I would make Australia a much more better place for people like tourists to come here and to see the Northern Territory, Western Australia, Sydney. I would make Australia a better place. I would bring them more hope. I would get rid of the bullying in schools and most in other places. Basically, if I was Prime Minister, I would make Australia a much more happier place and make it more happily environment, make it everything eco-friendly. That's some of the couple of the laws that I would do if I was Prime Minister. What's the biggest lie you ever told? This is a lie that I've told my parents and I still haven't told them yet. Recently, a few months ago, it was in Newcastle. I was by myself because I was waiting for my friends who, who I was going to meet, Argyle. I arrived an hour early, so I was just wandering around Newcastle, exploring the sites, like going past the jetties, the breweries, and all those other places. Then when I went down alleyway, I got blindsided by a few guys. There were about three of them. They were in their 20s. They looked like pretty menacing people. One of them grabbed me, like, but like from behind. And then one guy just went straight up to my face and threatened to punch my eyes out. In the, or in his words, he said that if I didn't give him my wallet. When he came straight up to my face, I felt this like really big surge of adrenaline come up. And I told him, you yeah, have to get me first in order to get my wallet. So I elbowed the guy behind me like as hard as I could because recently I've done some Taekwondo, so that was some help. I elbowed the guy behind me really hard who grabbed my arms. I went, I reached behind, threw him away, and then I just ran for it. And they went after me for about 15 minutes. It was really frightening. I had no idea if I was going to make it out of it like well. Eventually they did lose me. 
but yeah, it was very, very frightening. Were you okay at the end of it? Yeah, I was all right. It did shock me for a few days, but that's the question of it being a lie a bit. My parents the next day noticed the bruises on my arms from where the guy had grabbed me. I told them that I just tripped over and I fell on a fence and bench because I told them that I was drunk, but when I wasn't really. And it was a bit frightening to tell them because I was in shock. I, couldn't, I didn't really want to like go back and have a look at it again. Yeah, but that's yeah, pretty much. I can imagine that would have been very scary for you. Yeah. Just heard what you said, it was crazy. This is your last question. Okay. This, yes, this is my last question. What's your biggest accomplishment? My biggest accomplishment, I would have to say, is when I saved a dog's life. Uh, this was a couple of weeks ago, and I was walking to the post office. As I was walking, listening to my music, I saw this dog that was just sort of walking slowly, and then it sort of laid down, and I stopped, and I looked at it, and I wanted to see if it was okay, and it had like sort of yellowy pussy stuff in its eyes. It looked like I had not eaten for days. So basically, I stopped and I got my phone out and I started to ring up the people, the rangers, any dog shelters that could have helped me to get someone to come and pick up this dog. And unfortunately, after like 10, 20 minutes of sort of finding someone, they eventually said to me they couldn't find anyone to come and pick up the dog. So I was quite unhappy that they couldn't do it. So basically, I stood there for about maybe another 10 minutes and then I was like, I was going to pick up this dog and I was going to take it to the vet to myself. So basically, what I did was, I wanted to see if it could walk. So I got my headphones, it's the only bit of like leash that I could find, tied it around the dog and see if it could walk. And it, unfortunately, it couldn't walk, couldn't budge, do anything. Basically, I picked it up for 20 minutes, holding my arms, in panic and shock mode, and try to get it to my car as fast as I could, because I was only 20 minutes away from my car. I wasn't near any cars at the time. It wasn't near my car, of course. Anyway, so I put the dog down while I got my car keys for my car, and then I took it down to the vet, and then they scanned it with a micro scanner to see if it was owned by someone or if it was just a stray. Basically, they took over and they were gonna give me a call in the next couple of days. So, after a couple of days later, I did eventually get a phone call and apparently it was a lost dog and the person, eventually, it was found by someone who, by the sounds of it, must have left or something must have happened at the time. That is the biggest accomplishment that I've ever done and I'm very proud of what I've done in helping that dog as sensed by that. Have you ever done something heroic? Recently, a couple of months back, it was on a Friday night at Newcastle. There was a man walking down the steps. He was drunk, but he fell down the stairs. He hit his head. There was a lot of like blood coming out. He was dizzy. He had no idea what he was doing or where he was going. So I approached him and asked him if he was alright. I bought him a couple of bottles of water, called the ambulance. It took about 45 minutes just before the ambulance arrived. Basically, I was just helping him like get more tissues just to like soak up his head, which at that point was like dripping. But eventually the ambulance came and he was all right in the end, so I'm pretty glad that I helped him out. Wow, that is so heroic. Thanks guys for listening to our six questions that three of both of us have answered. Make sure to check out our other videos somewhere on the screen. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And feel free in the next video, give us some ideas of what me and Matt could do next. Yeah. I mean, like, we've done three music videos. We've, what else have we done in the we've past? Done a few crazy videos. Crazy videos. We've done some piano videos. Yep. Yeah, actually, feel free if you want Matt to do another a piano video. The last one was really good. So, um, Make sure to subscribe also, and peace. <laughs> oh my god. And take two, take two on that, because I said something. Ah, uh, no. Uh, you want to try again? Here we go again. Okay. Right. Three, two.